Hello everybody and welcome to our Colorado Big Game Guide. So before we jump in, I kind of wanted to give an overview of what this video is going to be and kind of how hopefully it's different than some of the videos you get from some of the mainstream outlets um, so we can be more helpful in your next Colorado elk hunt. So my name is Jordan Blankenship. I have been a resident of Colorado for the past three years. I'm an avid elk hunter, deer hunter, antelope, basically everything out here you can hunt, I try to hunt it. So before that, I lived in Illinois. I actually grew up in the Midwest uh, and was a Midwest elk hunter, meaning that like many of you, me and my buddies every September would pack the truck in the trailer, we would drive out to Colorado, basically throw a dart at the map and try to chase Colorado elk. Um, we did not have very much success in doing that. Um, that is because elk out here are very hard to find, and there's a lot of different kind of nuances to hunting Colorado that we just didn't know at the time. So this video is going to be everything we wish we knew as non-residents coming to Colorado for the first few times. Um, and hopefully that's going to make you more successful in your first trip coming out to Colorado. So the most asked question we get um, and if you've ever been on a forum, whether that's Rock Slide or if you've been on a, you know, a big game or Colorado Facebook page, the most asked question is, I want to come to Colorado. I have this tag or, you know, I want to hunt an over-the-counter unit. Where is the best place to start? And typically, nobody's giving up that information because it takes years and years to learn the units out here and how the Colorado Parks and Wildlife kind of set everything up. Um, so once you do finally find elk and you kind of figure it out, um, a switch kind of flips and you're able to find elk pretty much every other year. It's why they say 5% of hunters killed 95% of the elk. Because um, most people are coming out here for the first or second time. They have no idea what they're doing. They're parking on a road, they're hiking up a mountain, they don't find any elk, um, and they're pretty disappointed. So this video is going to be hopefully specifically to those hunters who are coming out for the first couple times where we can go into different units, we can go into mapping, scouting, e-scouting, and then what tools we use um, to essentially scout units without ever stepping foot in them where we can find elk no matter where we are or where we go, because we've kind of learned these tips and tricks. So we're going to go into it with you. Uh, we're going to go into specific units. We're going to go into the draw and how to take advantage of it so that you're not in an overly crowded unit. Um, Cause that's probably the biggest thing out here is hunting the right spot for your capabilities and what you're looking for. So we're going to go into how to pick a unit, how to draw that unit or how to pick an over the counter unit if that's what you choose to do. And then our tips and tricks to once you get out here, how to hunt Colorado to be successful. So this is going to be a presentation here in front of me. We're going to jump into it and we're going to go into specifically the different websites and stuff you need to get a tag. And hopefully it's an overview of everything you need to come out to Colorado and Elk Hunt for the first time. So let's jump in and get to it. Okay, everybody, and welcome to inside of my laptop. So we're going to get started here um, through the slides. Um, you could follow my mouse here. I figured this was the easiest way kind of to get all this information out. And also so you guys can screen record it. That way you can use it as notes for when you're applying to some of these units. Um, and also, if you want these slides, you can send us a message. That way you can use them as notes um, for when you're deciding how to get your tags in Colorado. So... Uh, like we said before, let's go over it again. My name is Jordan Blankenship. I'm a Midwest elk hunter turned Colorado resident. So I have lived in Colorado now um, for three elk hunting seasons. Um, so I have now been a resident out here hunting for three years. Um, and I've learned a lot since becoming a resident. And that's what we're going to try to share with you today. So this is going to be part one of the series. And we're going to cover the Colorado draw and over-the-counter tags um, and how to best maximize success by taking advantage of the tag and the draw system. So in my opinion, this is where most out-of-state hunters are lacking when it comes to taking advantage um, of elk hunting the state of Colorado. Um, 
So we're going to go over that and hopefully you can use some of these tips and tricks to get an advantage over a lot of the other people who are coming out here for the first or second time. So throughout this series, um, we are going to be using several tools. I am an Onyx Elite um, member. Um, I believe it's $100 a year to get Onyx Elite, and that gives you access to Onyx Hunt Maps, um, Top Rut, Hunt and Fool, and a bunch of other um, sites um, where you can pull data, and it really helps me out um, when I'm e-scouting and when I'm looking up what units I want to hunt, even being a resident. So to use these tools, um, you will have to have a membership. You don't have to go full-fledged and do Onyx Elite, you can do the Onyx mapping um, and just pick what state and you can also use Top Rut or you could even go on the CPW site and pull all the data yourself, although Top Rut is what I use because it's um, it comes with Onyx Hunt and I think without it you can pay a monthly per state membership and it breaks down all the data for you and gives it to you so you don't have to go and do all the calculations yourself. So. Those are the tools we're going to use for part one. Uh, we're not going to need Onyx hunt maps as much. We're pretty much just going to be using Top Rut and the CPW site. So you can find a unit um, later on using Onyx maps, and that's actually going to be part two. But for part one, we're just going to go over the draw and the tag system. So here we go. If you can kind of follow my mouse here, I'll kind of point out what I'm going over. So tags, um, to hunt in the state of Colorado, you have to have a tag just like anywhere else. Um, if you're used to the Midwest, if you're a resident of a state, you probably don't have to think too much about tags. When I lived in Illinois, it was pretty simple. When deer season came around, I went to Walmart, I bought my bow hunting tags, and I had a male and a female tag um, essentially for the entire state. I had an either sex and then a doe tag. So that is not how most western states work and Colorado is no different. So Colorado kind of has a complicated tagging system um, to get tags and that's why we're going to go over it today not only in detail but also really in depth that way you can hopefully use these um, tricks so you can get a better tag than other people. So OTC tags. You'll see OTC a lot if you're, you know, Googling on YouTube, you'll see OTC hunts or OTC this. What over OTC means is over the counter. Um, so essentially over the counter tags are simple. You just take in your hunter ID card into any tag location and you can buy your tags. It is as simple as that. So it really is just like when you were in the Midwest, you can walk into Walmart with your hunter's ID or a Bass Pro or wherever you want to get your tag, you hand it to them and you say, I want an over-the-counter elk tag and they will sell you that tag. Um, we're going to get into that um, a little bit more on the next slide, but that is kind of what makes Colorado famous for elk hunting is the ease you can get an over-the-counter tag. And that is what 90% of the people who come to the state of Colorado do. They go, they buy an over-the-counter tag, they start hunting. Draw tags. So this is the Colorado big game draw. Um, the draw is in March to April every year. Um, you have to know what unit, season, weapon, and animal you want to hunt with and get the code. This is found in the big game brochure and we are going to go over all of that. How to find the code, how to get the codes, and then how to actually apply once you find a unit. Um, you can go to the link there and that is where you will apply in the draw. The draw is in March every year. It usually starts one of the first weeks of March and it runs to the first week of April. So you got about a four to five week window um, to put in for the draw. Um, if you do not draw, you will be rewarded a preference point and you can still purchase an over-the-counter elk tag at any time. Um, we're also going to dig pretty deep into preference points and what they mean and why they are important, especially moving forward in the state of Colorado. Um, so let's walk through it. Draw versus over-the-counter tax. Um, which is right for me? Our opinion is the answer is both. Um, if you're only utilizing one system, so if you're only buying over-the-counter tags every year, then you're missing out on a lot of opportunities in the big game draw and vice versa. So we said before OTC stands for over-the-counter tags. 
these are the tags that make Colorado famous for elk hunters and probably why it's on your list. That is because, again, as long as you have a hunter's ID, which make sure you have your hunter safety card or your hunter ID card, whatever your state gives you, um, you can buy one of these tags. They are unlimited for residents and non-residents. So what that means is they don't cap them. They will sell as many as are available for whoever wants to buy one. They will sell a million of these tags if they can, um, which means these units are typically pretty crowded. Um, anyone with a hunter safety car can get one. They are only valid in over-the-counter units. So what does that mean? In the state of Colorado, the entire state is broken up into sections that they call units. These are very large areas and every area has different rules and it takes different tags to hunt certain areas. There is a map in the Colorado brochure that we're going to go over and it highlights every unit that's over the counter, which essentially means if you buy an over the counter tag, you can hunt any of the highlighted over the counter units. Um, they are available for archery and rifle, but you do have to pick. So if you want an archery hunt, you can buy an over the counter archery tag, uh, but then you cannot buy a rifle tag. If you buy a rifle tag, you can't buy an archery tag. And that goes into the A, B, and C class system of these tags, and we're gonna get into that as well. Um, Over-the-counter tags are elk only. Deer, antelope, bear, everything else is going to be in the draw. Um, and it says if you want to learn about over-the-counter tags, only jump to slide 28. Don't worry about that because we're going to be jumping around and we're going to get to it pretty soon. Big game draw tags. These tags are only available during the Colorado draw. These tags are limited in quota and have a resident versus non-resident cap. So this is important. Um, what this essentially means is 65% of these tags go to residents, 35% of the overall tags go to non-residents because there is a cap. So if there's 100 tags allotted, they'll give 65 of those tags to residents, 35 to non-residents. Um, that's as simple as I can make it. There are some kind of nuances where it's a minimum of 65 tags go to residents, so there could actually be more tags go to residents, but there will never be more than 35% go to non-residents. Um, anyone with a hunter safety card can enter the draw. These tags are unit specific, so just like the over-the-counter tags, you pick the unit to put in for it, and if you draw, you can only hunt that unit. They're also weapon specific, just like the over-the-counter tag. So you usually pick between archery, muzzleloader, or rifle. And in rifle seasons, you're even going to be picking between second, third, and fourth rifle. Um, deer tags, again, are only available in the draw. So we're going to use toprut.com. Um, which comes with an Onyx Elite membership. We do not get paid by Onyx. We do not get paid by Top Rut. They do not sponsor us. It is just what I use because I find it the easiest for me. I pay $100 a year and I have all of this information at my disposal. Um, I use it basically for any state I'm hunting in. And if you're coming to Colorado, you're already going to be spending so much money. It's worth it just to get Top Rut and get Onyx. So when you open Top Rut, this is what it looks like. You're going to filter. You're going to say, I'm hunting Colorado. I'm hunting elk. And for this example, we're going to be hunting archery elk. So we have it filtered right now by non-resident minimum points required. We're assuming you're a non-resident, and this is going to tell you the minimum amount of points right here on this line here it takes to draw a tag for these units. So... When you look at top right, it'll explain what all these columns are for, but just an overview. These are the units. They're always numbered. Um, draw odds. This is total non-resident permits. This is first choice non-resident applications, total quota, the hunt code, the hunt type, and then the season dates. So when you look through here, you'll see it goes numerically. So unit one, non-resident draw odds, there is a dash. What does that dash mean? That dash means that you have a 0% chance to draw unit one. If you look over here though, where these bright red arrows are pointing, you will see that they reward zero non-resident permits for unit one. That means you cannot get one of your non-resident because they won't give you one. However, funny enough, if you look at this arrow, 77 people non-residents applied even though they had a zero percent chance of getting it so 
that's important to know that the state of Colorado is not going to tell you if you're applying for a unit that you can't draw. Um, unit one, there's literally a 0% chance because they give zero tags out. So 77 people spent all that money and had a 0% chance of drawing and probably had no idea. Um, if you move down, you will see the next unit two, 100% at 30 points. That means you need 30 points to draw a unit two. You might say, well, what's a point? So in the state of Colorado, a preference point essentially is, an, is a point awarded to you if you do not draw a tag the year before. So all 77 of these people who put in for this tag, since none of them got it, they all were awarded one preference point. So when they apply the next year, they have one point. If they keep applying and they keep not drawing for whatever reason, they're unlucky or they keep applying for a unit they can't draw anyway, they'll keep earning points. Now, once you draw a tag, they take all your points away. So you can essentially think of points as every gear you put in for the draw. So at 100% at 30 points, that means you had to have 30 years worth of points to have a 100% chance of drawing this unit. In Colorado, the tags go to the highest point holders. So if you had 28 points, you had no chance of drawing. If you have zero points, you have 0% chance of drawing. So you don't want to put in for any units that have more points than you currently have. You'll see unit four, 94% at three points. That means nobody at two points drew that unit because this is the minimum points required and that's how you want to filter this by. So we're going to assume we have zero points and if we look down the list here, we'll see there's one unit, um, at least through here, that we can draw and that's unit seven. Now there's 200 plus units in Colorado. If we were to scroll farther down, you'd see that this list of units goes very far, but we're just looking at the first page here. Unit seven, we have a 60% chance at zero points. Um, if you look here, you'll see 303 non-residents applied and they give out 221 non-resident applications. That's pretty good odds. I mean, that's a, you know, two and three chances that you're gonna draw this unit. You can also look over here and see the total quota. A thousand people, 1100 people is a lot of people. However, remember the over-the-counter units they don't have any quota. So there could be 10,000 people in an over-the-counter unit. So just keep that in mind. That's why we tell everyone to at least put in for the draw for a unit you might be able to get even at 60% because at least you know how many hunters are going to be in that unit. All right, so moving on. If we want to apply for unit seven, we're going to have to know the hunt code. Now, top right is really nice and tells us, hey, it's right here. Here's your hunt code. But what does that mean? And also, top right is a third party. I like to make sure I double check my hunt codes by using the Colorado website. So tables below are from the 2022 Colorado Big Game brochure. So we're going to be using the 2022 brochure because that's the one I have right now. Um, they change though, so make sure you're keeping an eye on it. How to read hunt codes. Learning how to read hunt codes can ensure that you apply for the right hunt and the right unit. Exactly. So when you look at these codes, this is what you're going to type in when you apply for your unit. So this is how you read them. It tells you right here on this chart, the first letter um, stands for the species, the second letter is the sex, the third letter is the unit, Fourth letter is the season, and the fifth letter, letter is your weapon. So once you learn the codes really well, you could say, well, I don't even need the big game brochure. If I know I'm hunting deer, male, and unit 14 during early rifle season with my rifle, that's great, but you still want to look in the brochure because things do change. And then over here, the list A, B, and C get more than one license. Um, we talked about it earlier. You could get an archery tag, but if you get an archery tag, you couldn't get a rifle tag. This is the reason. Because when you look in the big game brochure, every tag is going to have either an A, B, or C next to it. 99% of buck tags or either sex tags are going to be list A. 
And if you read up here, you can see you can only get one list A license. The list B and the list C licenses are typically cow tags, female tags, and stuff like that. However, when you go into the draw, you can only put in for one species per draw. So you can't put in for an either sex tag and this cow tag. Um, so you're not going to pull two tags in the same draw. However, that's why they have a secondary draw and leftover tags. Um, what it means is as a non-resident, you're probably not getting two tags, so you usually don't have to look too far into it. This really plays a bigger role for residents who are able to hunt multiple seasons multiple times a year. However, if you can come to Colorado, if you have a lot of time off, you'll want to hunt you know, early archery elk, and then you want to come back for a late season cow tag, you'll want to look into some of these B-list units to see what you can maybe draw on a secondary draw that happens after the primary draw. So a little more on hunt codes. This is again straight out of the Colorado Big Game brochure. We have the link right there. We'll put it below our video. There is a physical Big Game brochure, but there's also an online PDF you can download. So when we're looking here at these archery dates, this is what kind of the brochure looks like. It can be really hard to read if you don't remember what the hunt codes mean and what you're looking at. So right now we're looking at archery limited licenses. So what limited licenses mean is that they're limited. They only sell so many. So you're not going to find any over-the-counter licenses in this part of the brochure. You're only looking at draw licenses. We're going to scroll back down here. Remember unit seven, that's the unit we could draw with 60% certainty. Um, there's more numbers listed next to it. Unit seven, there's a 7, 8, 9, 19, and 191. What that means is, is with a unit 7 tag, you can hunt unit 7, 8, 9, 19, or 91. So now you're not just limited to one section. You can actually hunt five different units, which is going to be a very large area in the state. If you go down to unit 8 and unit 9, you'll see it says use C unit 7. That is important because if you were scouting and you really liked unit 9, and you knew how to read the hunt codes and you put in the hunt code, but you put in unit nine instead of unit seven, you will not draw a tag because there is no such thing as a unit nine hunt code because unit eight, nine, 19 and 191 are all lumped into unit seven. Keep that in mind. So if you wanna hunt unit seven, you're going to take this code here and you're going to put it into the draw and then the website at Colorado is nice enough to confirm to you it's going to come back and say you have selected to hunt archery in unit 7, either sex tag during first archery. Now, if you look over here, there's some question marks. It says new, unit 80 and unit 81. You might be thinking, did Colorado make new units? They did not. Um, we're going to get into why there's new units in the brochure every year and why it's super important to pay attention. Because um, essentially what Colorado is doing is they're taking units from the over-the-counter pool. So if there's maybe 30 units you can hunt as over-the-counter, every year they're taking some units out and they're putting it into limited licenses. Essentially what that means is every year the area you can hunt with an over-the-counter tag is getting smaller and smaller, which means it's more crowded and more crowded, which is why you want to make sure you're putting in for the draw. Okay, so how do we apply for the draw? So the draw ends in April every year. You're going to need your hunt code, which we just showed you. You must buy a hunting license before you can enter. This is non-refundable. Each application, it says it's only $7. Um, it's actually $9 this year. $7 is for a resident, so I apologize. If you draw a tag you do not want, you can return it for a refund or points. And then anything that isn't drawn is going to be available in the leftover draw. So this is an actual view of the Colorado Parks and Wildlife website. It's pretty simple. You're going to go to Colorado Parks and Wildlife. You're going to go to Things to Do, Hunt Big Game, and then you're going to come up here and click Buy and Apply. Once you do that, the screen's going to open and it's going to tell you to put in your hunt code. You're going to select the species. There's going to be a picture of an elk, a picture of a deer, a picture of an antelope. You're going to pick elk, and then you're going to type in that hunt code that we pulled from the big game brochure. You're going to hit submit, and then you're going to go through and essentially answer a bunch of questions and submit 
for that unit. Okay, so how to apply. Again, you have to have this hunt code. We just said it, but I'm just going back over it. When you know what unit you want to hunt, you're going to get this hunt code, go to the website, put it into the big game brochure. So, leftover tags. So we applied for the draw. We know that we needed um, our hunt code. What are leftover tags? So all leftover tags from the primary draw go to the secondary draw. So believe it or not, some units don't sell all of their tags. So when you start to look at some of these, uh, let's look here, unit 18. You have a 100% chance at zero points. So you say, okay, Jordan, I have zero points. Why don't I just put in for that unit? I know I'm going to get it. And you are right. You will 100% get that unit. Here's one of the tips and the tricks um, of the Colorado draw system that most people don't know about um, that can help you down the road. So there were first choice applications, 792. Okay. The total amount of permits were 1047. What that means is, is the difference between these two numbers, which is somewhere around 250 tags, those tags didn't get drawn because only 792 people applied for over a thousand tags. So what happens to those 250 tags? Colorado doesn't just eat the tags. They get thrown into the secondary draw which is when most people will apply for them. However, on your primary, your very first draw application, there's going to be second choices. So your first choice is what most people put in for their units. Now, and stay with me here. Your first choice is the only choice that Colorado will take your preference points from, meaning, if you have, say you have five preference points and you're waiting to hunt a unit that takes 10 preference points, if you were to put in for this unit as your first choice, you would draw it because you have more than zero points and you would lose all your points. However, if you were to put as your first choice as nothing or a preference point and then put unit 18 as your second choice, you're not going to draw it before these 792 people because they put it as their first choice. However, there's still 250 tags left over that you can draw with your second choice. And if you draw it as your second choice on your primary draw application, you do not lose your points. So what that means is if you're someone who has points that and doesn't want to lose them, you can still draw a unit in the draw and not lose your points. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, send me a message and I will explain it. I use this every year with my mule deer tags. I hunt a unit that takes zero points to draw and draw, but instead of putting it as my first choice and never gaining a point, I put it as my second choice. I get a point every year and I still draw the tag without burning any of my points. This is a really good system to use if you're wanting to save up points and not hunt over-the-counter units. Um, so really keep that in mind that that is a really good way um, to kind of beat the system that most people don't know about. You can use it as your second choice and you don't have to wait for the leftover draw. You'll actually pull the tag before the leftover draw even starts um, so you don't even have to worry about it. If you still don't draw, so you're not one of the 250 people who draw and all those tags go away. Um, there are leftover tags in the secondary draw. In the secondary draw, you again don't lose any points. So again, there's a primary draw from March to April. All the tags that get put in for go, all the leftover tags go into the secondary draw. You can go back into the secondary draw and this is a good time to get those B-list tags, those cow tags, those doe tags. Um, and those again, as long as it's not your very first choice in the primary draw, you will not lose your points. So you can put in as your first choice in the secondary draw and you won't lose your points. 
That sounds very confusing. Um, look into it more in the Colorado brochure. They go over it in detail. You can also message us and I will try to explain it better than I did today. Cost. So how much is it going to cost me to hunt in Colorado? So to apply for the big game draw, applicants must have a hunter's ID or education card and a qualifying license. So you're going to hear the word qualifying license a lot when you're trying to apply for a Colorado tag. What a, what a qualifying license is, um, is essentially a non-resident small game tag. You'll see it right here and a habitat stamp. You have to buy a habitat stamp. They add it on to your small game license. So what it means is 86 plus 1059, we might as well say, I think they hit you with a $3 processing fee. It's a hundred bucks. You have to have a $100 small game hunting license before you can put in for the draw. So it's going to ask you before you do the draw, do you have a qualifying license? You're going to hit no. I want to buy one. You're going to buy the small game license with the annual habitat stamp for $100. That is non-refundable. They're going to take your $100. If you think that's a lot, um, you should check with some other states because I put in for Arizona, New Mexico, and a lot of other states that cost a lot more money to even put in for the draw. Again, another reason why Colorado is so popular. Up here, the application processing fee, this is also non-refundable. We said before it's $9 for non-residents. What is that? For every species, that you apply for the draw in, they're gonna take $9 from you. So if you put in for elk, unit seven, like we were discussing before, we put in for unit seven, they're gonna say, okay, do you have your small game license? I do, I paid my $100. Okay, you can enter the draw, give us nine more dollars. So you're gonna pay $9. You can then put in for a deer tag for $9. You can put in for an antelope tag for $9. You can put in for, you know, whatever you wanna hunt, $9 is how much they're gonna charge you to apply. So once you have that $100 small game license, you might as well just pay the $9 and start applying for other species as well. Here's the tag price. Um, this was in 2022, sometimes they go up. Um, Non-resident bull either sex fishing combo, um, $798. They make you buy a fishing license in Colorado. I guess they just assume you're probably going to fish anyway, so they just tack it on. Um, so that's what you're looking at, $700.98. $700 Deer are $420. Uh-oh, I'm moving my slides around. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, buy points. So we talked about points and how important they are. Um, essentially, say you're putting in for elk and you're like, I know I'm not going to deer hunt this year, so I don't even want to put in for a unit because what if I accidentally draw it and then I have to pay $400 for a deer tag? You can buy points. So instead of putting in for a unit for deer, you can put in this code right here, DP99999P, whatever. Every animal or game species is going to have its own preference point code. So if you're putting in for elk and you know you don't want a deer hunt, for that $9 extra you can put in the deer hunt preference code as your first choice as it says right here and then they're going to give you a point. If you elk hunt out here for five years and never deer hunt, five years down the road you're going to have five deer points and then you might say well wait a minute I have five deer points I might as well go on a really cool deer hunt. So this is also the code you would put in if you want to use kind of the tricks we showed earlier where you're going to apply for a hunt code as your second choice. You can put this as your first choice, which guarantees you'll get a point. It guarantees they won't take your point and you'll get a point. And then whatever you put as your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth um, choice on your application, if you draw one of those, they don't take any points away because it wasn't your first choice. And it says that right here if you read this. Um, so our recommendation is always put in for points, even if you're not going to hunt that species. It's $9 extra to put in for a preference point. Um, the same can be said if you're going to hunt an over-the-counter elk unit. 
If you know you're not going to put in for the draw for elk, you might as well just go ahead and put in for preference points in March before you come out. That way you have a preference point for the next year. Opportunity. So um, let's say you're coming out here, you're going to elk hunt with your buddies, and you found out, because we just looked it up, that you can draw an elk tag with 60% certainty in Unit 7. Um, your buddy says, well, that's awesome. I heard there's a bunch of deer in that unit. Can we get deer tags? Well, let's look. We used the same thing we used earlier, only we searched under mule deer. This is, again, at toprud.com. Unit 7, there's a 91% chance a non-resident will draw a deer tag at zero points. So if you and your four buddies are coming out, um, chances are you're not going to kill four elk. Maybe three guys get elk tags, one guy gets a deer tag. One guy deer hunts, um, the other three elk hunt. You never know when you're walking through the woods and a big old mule deer is going to pop up. Um, you have a 91% chance to draw that tag. Now, you'll notice that the chance of drawing that deer tag is higher than the elk tag. So if you draw the deer tag, but you don't draw the elk tag and you don't want a deer hunt, you can just return that tag and they'll either give you your money back or they'll give you a preference point. So that's another thing a lot of people look over. They say, well, I don't want to risk drawing a deer tag and not an elk tag. Well, you can return that tag and get refunded either points or money. Um, if you draw them both, you can come out here to Colorado with an elk tag and a deer tag in your pocket, um, which is a really fun way to hunt because then you can pretty much chase almost anything you see. Um, there's even some units, they'll have a bear claw next to it over here. You can add a bear tag. Um, I think the non-resident cost is like a hundred bucks where you can elk hunt and have a bear tag in your pocket just in case you come across one. So if you're going to hunt a unit for elk, you might as well look up and see if you can draw a deer tag for that unit as well. Alright, so we kind of went over this. This is results. Um, Essentially, if we would have put in for that unit 7 um, and we don't draw it, we get a point. Um, if you do not draw a tag, you can apply again in a secondary draw. Um, even if you do draw a tag, you can apply in the secondary draw as long as it's a B-list tag. Um, and remember, if you were unsuccessful in unit 7 elk but drew the mule deer tag, you can send back the mule deer tag. The secondary draw is going to happen after all the results of the primary draw are out, and we have went over this quite a bit, but here's where you're going to look for that information. You might say, well, how do I know what tags are left? You're going to go to the Colorado Parks and Wildlife again, and there's going to be a link after the first draw that says leftover tags available, and you're going to be able to scroll through and you'll be able to see in what units what tags are left available, and then you can apply for those tags. So if you want to look into the secondary draw, that's how you're going to do it. Now, over-the-counter tags. This is what makes Colorado famous for elk hunting across the world. Um, that is because, again, we talked about it at the beginning. You can just come out here and buy an unlimited amount of these tags. You yourself can only buy one, but an, an unlimited amount of people can buy a tag. Um, that's really awesome. Most states do not let non-residents do this. A lot of states don't let residents do this. Um, so why doesn't everyone just come out to Colorado and buy over-the-counter tags? The reason is because they are unlimited, these units can get very, very busy, very, very crowded, very, very fast. Um, so most hunters use these as tags you either use, if you don't draw the tag you really wanted, this is a good backup option. It's also a good way to hunt every year and save points up for a unit you really want to hunt. That's kind of the point of these over-the-counter tags. Most people, however, who are coming from out of state, use it as their primary option of hunting. They don't look into the draw. They don't look into better units that they can draw with one point or zero points. They only hunt over-the-counter units, and they really limit themselves on opportunities. So when you pull up the Colorado Big Game brochure, there's going to be a map when you scroll down to over-the-counter archery tags. And when you look here, you'll see that all of these units in gray are valid units. Look at all of them. So you can say, well, that's half the state. 
And that is true. Half the state in Colorado currently is over-the-counter units. You can see up here, Unit 7, 8, 19, 191 that we were looking at is an over-the-counter. It's not unlimited, which means if we were to draw one of these tags, we know that all of the hunters that draw these over-the-counter tags, they got to stay over here. They don't get to come over here where we are. So that's the advantage you're getting. This is archery. We're going to go to the next slide. This is rifle. So you can draw over-the-counter tags and rifle as well. The caveat to this, and we're going to go back up to our archery tags. Remember unit 80 and 81 from earlier down here? Well, in 2021, these were over-the-counter units. Now they're not. They're no longer valid. So a couple things with that. If you're used to coming out here every year and hunting over-the-counter units, or your buddy says, hey, my dad used to hunt this over-the-counter unit. He told us we should go here. Make sure you check every single year that your unit is still an over-the-counter unit. Because a Colorado Parks and Wildlife Officer would like nothing more than to get, write you a ticket and give you a big old fine because they changed the map and you didn't look at it year to year. I will also tell you the 2023 big game brochure is already out unit 41 42 421 i believe 411 these units have all been taken off the map as well they're now draw only units this is going to continue to happen every year the over-the-counter map gets smaller and smaller and that crams more and more over-the-counter hunters into smaller and smaller areas um, the reason Colorado is doing this is because of the influx of out-of-state hunters and essentially it's residents getting upset that, hey, the spot I want to hunt in my backyard is just full of people who aren't even from here. So Colorado is trying to make it more and more difficult to get over-the-counter tax, which is what most states have already went to. If you look at Arizona with their over-the-counter um, you know, their archery deer, their Idaho used to be over the counter, and now you have to basically fight a lottery system on opening day. Most states are getting away from over the counter tags just because there's too many people. Um, one more thing, a little tip this star here is Denver. This is I 25. This is the main interstate. You're not going to kill any elk east of I 25. So don't even, don't even look over here. If you haven't started e scouting yet and you're like, oh, I can draw a unit 124 with zero point. Yeah, everyone can because there's no elk out here. The mountains start right here where my mouse is going and all the elk are over here. So you're not you're not going to kill anything over here. So that kind of eliminates half the state in its own. But just in case you didn't know that, that's an important kind of caveat. All right, so over-the-counter units, we just talked about this. Unit 81 and 80, they've been moved out of the or out of over-the-counter to a draw. Um, every year, Colorado residents vote to remove unlimited over-the-counter units from non-resident hunters. I am a resident. I get the survey every year. Every year, I vote to get rid of over-the-counter units. Why do I do that? Because the more units that are draw units, the less hunters that will be out here. It's very selfish of Colorado residents to do that. However, when you look at other states and you see how they treat their resident hunters, um, you kind of start to get jealous and yeah. Build points now so you have them when over-the-counter units are eliminated. There could be a time where there are no more over-the-counter hunts in Colorado. So if you're planning on coming out here in two or three years, you better start just trying to get points now. Um, even if you're not going to hunt this year or next year, start earning points. Because if the year you want to come out here is the year they finally say no more over-the-counter units, and you have zero points, you might not get to hunt. If you've kind of thought ahead and you have two or three points, you're going to get to hunt whatever unit you want to hunt for the most part. Um, so just start putting in points now. Even if you're thinking down the road, you don't know if you're going to get to hunt, put in for the points. Okay. So now that we know um, strategy and the draw is the main thing I see missing when it comes to new hunters. So here's what my recommendations are. Apply for a draw unit, even if it's a zero point unit. Um, this will limit the amount of pressure in that unit. So if you're wanting to come to Colorado, you have zero points. Either wait another year, save up some more money, and hunt a one-point unit, because that's going to open 
the door to many more, or if you're dead set on hunting and you have zero points, try to hunt a zero point unit instead of an over the counter unit. Um, if trying to build points for a trophy unit, use the preference point as your first choice. Um, and then find an easy to draw zero point unit as your second choice or hunt over the counter units. Like I said, I do this every year for deer season. My first choice I put in for a preference point, so I'm guaranteed to get it. And then I usually just try to find a unit that I think is going to have leftover tags to put it in my second choice. Um, and it's worked out for me now two of the last three years. I've drawn a deer tag in the first primary draw and I haven't lost any points. So I now have five deer points and I'm finally going to get to cash in on it this year. But the cool thing is I was able to deer hunt every single year leading up to this and I didn't have to use my points. If you're coming to Colorado, you must buy a license. So buy it early and apply in the draw. So if you know you're going to hunt an over-the-counter unit, your buddies say, hey, we go to the same unit every year. We know where the elk are. We've had a lot of success. It's an over-the-counter unit. You don't even have to worry about the draw. That's awesome. A lot of people find honey holes and over-the-counter units. They come back every single year. However, you still have to buy the license. So the difference in cost between putting in for the draw and just putting in for a preference point and then hunting your over-the-counter unit as opposed to just hunting an over-the-counter unit and not getting a preference point is $9. So if you're already going to hunt elk in Colorado, it's only $9 more to put in for the point. You want to do that. There's no reason not to spend the extra $9 and get a point because next year that honey hole over-the-counter unit might be a draw unit. And if you're a non-resident, you're going to wish you had a point so you could compete with the other people. Okay. Archery hunts are typically easier to draw. If you go through Topra and you look, it's just easier to draw archery units. People would rather hunt with a rifle. Um, expectations. We're going to cover this at the end of part one, the end of part two, the end of part three. This entire series, we're going to cover expectations. Um, Expect and plan to kill an elk, but don't be surprised when you don't. Success rates are very low. What that means is don't come out here unprepared. Um, don't get 9 or 10 miles back, which you hear people say that, but I'm just going to let you know it is very hard to actually get that far off a road in Colorado. Um, there's roads, there's trails everywhere. Chances are you're going to be somewhere between 3 and 5 miles from a trailhead. Don't get so far back that you can't get whatever you kill out and make sure you have enough food, water, and supplies to take the time to get that animal out. Plan as if you're going to kill an elk, but don't be surprised when you don't. Over-the-counter units have the lowest success rates. They say typically less than 5%, and that goes for the entire unit. That's not just the public land, that's the private land as well. Um, maps are flat, Colorado is not. It's harder to get off a road than you think. And everyone else has the same plan as you. Everyone else is trying to get way back in there as well. Um, you'll be surrounded by other hunters. When you watch TV, you'll see Vanilla. You'll see all these guys are hunting. There's no one else around. I assure you there is. They're either hunting a unit that took 20 years to draw, or they're just not showing you those people on TV. Trust me. If you're out here, you're going to see other people. Just be prepared for it. Elk are always where you find them and never where you don't. If you aren't finding elk, move. If it's September and you're not hearing elk bugle and you're not seeing elk, you need to move. There's elk in Colorado. Okay, if you're not having any luck, go to a different spot. Um, gates get locked, roads get closed, have several backup plans. So many people come out here, they know where they want to park, they know where they want to camp, they drive 15, 16, 17 hours, they get here, and then the road is closed. They have nowhere to go. Have a backup plan because... CPW closes roads. They put no parking signs in places that you're like, you don't even know people would be out here, not allowed to park here. Um, finally, elk hunting is what you make it, but it's mostly an expensive camping trip. Lots of guys come out every year. They'll bring a camper. They'll camp by their truck. If you want it to be just a fun camping trip on the road, not be too strenuous, you probably still see elk. Um, if you want to put 70 pounds on your pack and try to go nine miles into the wilderness campaign style, you can do that too. Um, lots of people find lots of success in different ways. Don't let anybody tell you that you have to do it one way to kill elk. There's lots of different ways to kill elk. 
There's elk killed right off the road every year. There's elk killed 10 miles back in the wilderness area every year. So when you look at these success rates over here, this is unit seven, because that's the one we've been talking about. And you'll see that over here, there are 450 total hunters. Now, I believe this number means there were 450 total hunters um, that returned their survey, because I know there's more hunters than that. 36 killed bulls for an 8% overall success. What does that mean? That again is everyone. That's public land. That's private land. That's outfitters. That's everyone. If someone has, you know, a yard full of elk every year and they let three or four of their buddies come out and shoot elk with rifles, that goes into the 36 bull harvest percent. You coming out and hunting public land have a much lower success always than what Top Red is sending you. On average, over-the-counter units, archery, are way less than 5%. Remember, unit 7 wasn't even over-the-counter. This is a draw unit, which is why it has a little bit higher success rate. So just know that. Um, if you're hunting private land, you're hunting with a guide, your success rate is going to go up. If you're hunting by yourself, um, you know, public land in a crowded area, it's going to be really low. 5% um, success rate means you can go elk hunting for 20 years, and on average, you're going to kill one elk. Keep that in mind. You can see over here, Top Rut gives you that information. The only units that are going to have super high harvest rates are going to be units with a lot of private land. So keep an eye on that when you're picking units. And we're going to go over a lot of that on part two on how to read some of these charts and look at maps and figure out what units are actually best. Because uh, there's a lot of hidden numbers in those numbers. Tips. Here's some tips because you made it to the end of this long video. Um, use your road list feature on Onyx to find wilderness areas to hunt elk that other people won't slash can't get to. Um, what that means is wilderness areas in Colorado essentially mean you're not allowed to have ATVs. You're not allowed to, you know, dirt bikes. There's not a lot of trail systems through there. It usually means there's not a lot of access, which means the elk like to hide there. So just a little tip, turn on your road list feature and kind of look over those areas to see if any of those um, are possible places to hunt. Um, stay on hiking trails to cover ground until you actually find elk. So many people think, well, I was told that I need to get way off the road where people won't be. I have to get off the hiking trails. That's not true. For one, there's hiking trails all over Colorado, so it's hard enough to get away from them. But for two, those trails make it so much easier to cover ground. Um, I can tell you the bull we killed last year in an over-the-counter unit that is very crowded was shot with two feet standing on the trail, meaning the hunter had two feet on the trail. I was filming behind him. He shot the bull right off the trail. The bull, not last year, but the year before me and Hunter were on, we were literally on the trail when we heard it bugle. We got off the trail maybe 50 to 100 yards. You can find bulls on the trails use the hiking trails to cover a lot of ground until you find the elk. Once you find the elk, you might have to bust off the trail. Use the trails to find elk. When you're e-scouting and planning your hunt, plan on staying on the trails. Um, don't worry too much about elevation. They're usually in the nastiest part of the unit anyway. Sometimes all the roads in a unit are at the very bottom, which means the elk go up. Sometimes, depending on where you're hunting out here, all the roads are at the very top and the elk are at the bottom of the canyon. Just know, Elk are where you find them, like we said before. Uh, I like to avoid ATV accessible areas. That's because I am young. My buddies are young. Um, and I don't have an ATV out here. So if I don't have an ATV, I don't want to be competing with guys who are driving ATVs. Because I cannot outrun um, whatever ATV you're on. So if you have an ATV, hunt ATV areas. If you don't have an ATV, avoid them. Um, we're going to go over units that are ATV accessible in part two. Elk bugle off September. We said it before, if you aren't hearing them, move. Um, elk are call shine over the crowded units. They're not going to come to you. Every year when we bring new hunters out, um, they hear an elk bugle and they think they're going to turkey hunt um, elk. They think they're going to sit by a tree, they're going to bugle, 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 and an elk's going to show up. That's just not realistic in an over-the-counter unit. If you watch on TV, you'll see a lot of people call an elk. 
usually those are areas that aren't very pressured. Uh, that's not to say that you can't use calling to kill elk, because that's what we do. Um, just know that elk don't see very well, and that's part of our next one, use wind and thermals. You can usually get pretty close to elk just by stalking them. The elk during September are going to be very, very loud. You can pinpoint them and get very close to them without making any noise. And if you have a cow call, you can usually cow call and make a bunch of noise. You can step on sticks. You can walk through the brush. They usually just think that you're another cow elk. So bugling, I have not found very much success in over-the-counter units um, or even easy-to-draw units. Typically, getting close to elk is just hearing them, getting as close as you can. Make sure you use your wind and thermals. Um, and try to get as close as you can before you make a bugle or before you make a play at that elk. You're not going to call an elk two or three hundred yards to you. Um, all right, so that was the tag system. Hopefully that helps you out a little bit on how to get a tag out here in Colorado. Um, part two is going to be how to choose the right unit. Um, so it, this video is going to end and we're going to jump right into part two in the series. Part two is going to be how to choose a unit. We're going to be using e-scouting data from the CPW and top rut. So we're going to be going over a lot of that. Um, basically e-scouting units, how I e-scout units and how I can tell what trails are open, what trails are closed, um, where you can park, where you can't park, things like that, as well as how to tell what units are ATV accessible, which units are not ATV accessible. Um, and then we're going to use a lot of the data you saw in some of the charts before with harvest rates, um, you know, number of hunters, stuff like that to choose a good unit by just looking at mapping uh, without actually having to step foot in a unit. We have found a lot of success doing it this way and we want to share it with you. So that's going to be part two. Um, but yeah. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions, DM the recruit team. You can message us on Instagram, Facebook. You can send us an email. We'll try to get back to you. Um, if you want to keep going, once this video ends, um, go ahead and click on part two and we'll start our e-scouting segment. Thank you.